Chromal chloride can easily kill you. It is also a potent and volatile carcinogen. Seriously, do not try to make chromal chloride, neither at home nor in a lab. Welcome back everyone, today we are going to make chromal chloride. For this 73.5 grams of potassium dichromate, 62 grams of sodium chloride and 130 milliliters of sulfuric acid were used. For the cleanup to reduce hexavalent chromium to something much safer, ascorbic acid was used. Obviously chromal chloride is highly dangerous, therefore a lab coat, a gas mask and also a pair of gloves will be worn throughout this procedure. The potassium dichromate was weighed out first. Besides being really toxic, potassium dichromate is this orange, reddish and really beautiful looking salt. The yield of this procedure is highly dependent on how well the powders are mixed. To ensure even mixing, we use this bullet blender to grind them together into a fine and even powder. When this mixer is opened, a lot of dust will escape. A gas mask was worn while transferring the mixed powders to a 1 liter round bottom flask. The sodium chloride used was actually dried in a microwave beforehand. We took this flask and put it into heating mantle. No stirfish was used. The large amount of powder would have prevented the stirfish from working. While measuring out the sulfuric acid, I'm going to explain to you why we are even making chromal chloride. I really like toxic fuming liquids and somewhere on the internet it said that chromal chloride looks like blood. With this being the last year we can use concentrated sulfuric acid, my interest was stirred up and I decided to make this abstruse compound. All ground glass joints were well sealed using concentrated sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is often used for greasing the joints when distilling hot, oxidizing and corrosive substances. The distillation bridge was flushed using ice cold water and we were ready to begin. The stopcock of the addition funnel was opened, the sulfuric acid was added slowly. You can see that the color of the solid changes. The reason for that is simple. A chemical reaction takes place, but actually it's not just one chemical reaction, it's three chemical reactions. Three chemical reactions are taking place simultaneously. At first the potassium dichromate reacts with sulfuric acid to form potassium bisulfate chromium trioxide and water. You are probably interested in what pure chromium trioxide looks like. Well, I have it, so let me show it to you. Pure chromium trioxide is a red solid. At the same time, hydrogen chloride is produced. The chromium trioxide and hydrogen chloride then react to form chromal chloride and water. Because chromal chloride is quickly hydrolyzed by water, a large excess of sulfuric acid was used to prevent that. All reactions taking place can be summed up to what you see above. All of the sulfuric acid has been added. The addition funnel was closed. Before continuing, we set up a reducing bath to destroy any hexavalent chromium. As a reducing agent, a small amount of ascorbic acid was added. Sodium sulfide could also be used. The addition funnel was swapped out for a well greased stopper. For cleanup, the addition funnel was put directly into the reducing bath. I let it sit there for at least 10 minutes before continuing with the cleanup. We can already observe the deeply red color of chromal chloride. The color kinda resembles that of bromine. I let everything sit and react for 10 minutes and then I turned on the heating mantle. The vapor phase in the reaction flask got darker and darker. At some point we had those blobs of maybe chromal chloride floating on the liquid. Chromal chloride has a density higher than that of sulfuric acid. But the density might be lower than that of sulfuric acid with a bunch of other stuff dissolved into it. After only a few minutes of waiting, 
First chromo chloride started distilling over. If we were distilling bromine, the vapors would look a lot cleaner and clearer. The moment I saw the first drop of chromo chloride, I was really happy. In real life, it actually looked like blood. If your blood, however, starts fuming like chromo chloride, you should probably go and see a doctor. For safety reasons, I had a hose leading to the outside into a canister containing a reducing agent to the apparatus. Because of an excess of sodium chloride used, hydrogen chloride would also be produced in excess and this had to be vented somewhere. The condensing chromal chloride looks really beautiful. You can see those small drops condensing on the Liebig condenser, flowing downwards and then quickly forming larger and larger drops, which are ending up in the receiving flask. At some point I decided that the distillation wasn't fast enough for me. To speed it up, the reaction flask was insulated using aluminium foil. The entire distillation took approximately one hour. I stopped the distillation the moment no more chromo chloride came over. This moment was reached when something that looked like waterfront started to climb up the distillation apparatus as you are going to see later on. For now, more and more chromo chloride came over. At first glance, chromo chloride honestly looks like dirty bromine. Before any water could make it over, the receiving flask was stoppered and swapped out for a receiving flask containing water. The water serves two reasons. Firstly, it reacts with chromo chloride to form chromic acid and hydrochloric acid. And secondly, it also absorbs hydrogen chloride gas. The heating mantle was turned off. I allowed the entire apparatus to cool down before continuing. Once it cooled down enough, I assume moist air was sucked back and led to this cloud in a bottle. This effect right here was extremely satisfying to watch. I guess hydrogen chloride reacted with water vapors to form tiny droplets of hydrochloric acid you can see here. But it is also possible that those are tiny droplets of chromic acid. At some moment I hoped that this effect finally stopped. Unfortunately it didn't, it continued for 20 more minutes. Before disassembling the apparatus I took this spraying bottle and sprayed a lot of ascorbic acid solution in there. This should already eliminate a lot of the hexavalent chromium in the distillation bridge. After we were finished, everything was placed into the reducing bath. You can see the green color of chromium-3. Chromium-3 plus ions are a lot safer to handle than any hexavalent chromium. But here you go, some toxic fuming blood, better known as chromal chloride. I already know the weight of the flask and the glass stopper, therefore we just had to weigh it. In total, we collected 54.2 grams and this represents a yield of 70%. Some of the chromo chloride will be ampulled for my chemical collection and some of it will go into this PDF elated Durand bottle for our later experiments. We began with the ampules. A little chromo chloride was added to one ampule to make the vapors visible and a lot of chromo chloride was added to the second ampule to observe the liquid. When looking closely, you can see nasty vapors. This is chromo chloride being hydrolyzed to hydrochloric acid and chromic acid. The rest of the chromo chloride I transferred to this bottle. Because of chromo chloride's reactive nature, only PTF lidded bottles should be used. I immediately washed my hands and wrists using fresh ascorbic acid solution after completing this transfer. As I already noticed, chromal chloride looks vastly different from bromine. On the left you have two ampules of chromal chloride and on the right one ampule of bromine. There are a few solid chunks in the chromal chloride I have overseen before but I'm digressing. We want to compare chromal chloride to bromine. When you look at it closely you can actually see that chromal chloride is somewhat clear while bromine looks almost black. It becomes even more obvious when we hold a flashlight behind the ampules.
A lot of light makes it through the chromo chloride. With the small ampule, this can be observed even better. When we hold the bromine in front of the flashlight, there's no chance. You can't see any light coming through. Now we are going to try out a few reactions. This is distilled water. When chromo chloride is added, the few drops directly sink to the bottom. With water, chromo chloride reacts to form hydrochloric acid and chromic acid. Chromic acid has the chemical formula H2ClO4. The bubbles you can see here when you look closely are hydrogen chloride. They sort of float on top of the chromo chloride and make this lava lamp like effect, but sadly the chromo chloride decided to stay on top of the beaker. To the next reaction, let's try some ethanol. With ethanol, the main reaction is chromo chloride and ethanol form acetaldehyde. And there are also a lot of other byproducts. You can see a lot of green chromium 3 oxide settling on the wall of the test tube, and there are some hydrogen chloride vapors being produced as well. If more chromo chloride is added, we can even get the green chromium 3 oxide vapors to leave the test tube. Not even more interesting stuff. Let's try some toluene. What's interesting is that toluene can be directly oxidized to benzaldehyde using chromo chloride. Chromo chloride first reacts with toluene to form a complex, which can then be hydrolyzed to form benzaldehyde. This is what the chromo chloride toluene complex looks like. Chromo chloride was added and nothing happened. I let it sit like this and it didn't look like anything would happen anymore and then I switched off the camera. Approximately 30 seconds after I switched off the camera it began to make a hissing sound and I switched it on again. A small amount of distilled water was added to hydrolyze the complex. This should yield a small amount of benzaldehyde. The test tube was shaken and left to stand for 2 minutes. Afterwards there were small droplets of what was hopefully benzaldehyde floating to the top. For the next reaction we added diethyl ether to the test tube. The ether soon caught on fire, but it wasn't as spectacular as I hoped, so we will have to try even more reagents. We added what looked like 1 milliliter of homemade styrene. I might actually show you how we made styrene in a future video. Let's see this again. I wanted to make something that looked like a lava lamp, so I simply added some chromo chloride to a test tube containing distilled water. Unfortunately, all the chromo chloride sank to the bottom and it didn't really want to dissolve. Occasionally, there were some hydrogen chloride bubbles, but that was it. Upon shaking, it bubbled profusely until it all dissolved. The contents of the test tube looked delicious, but you shouldn't drink this cancer juice. After it was finished, all of the test tubes and all contaminated equipment was thrown into the reducing bath. 
More reducing agent was added because you can still see some chromic acid. There you have it. Two ampules of chromic chloride I will embed in epoxy for my collection. And what looks like 15 mils of chromic chloride I don't exactly have any use for. If you have an idea what we should do with chromic chloride next, let me know and I'll see what we can do with this. If you liked this video, make sure to drop me one of these and consider subscribing to my channel for more chemistry content in the future. I wish all of you a nice day. Until next time. Bye.